guys, welcome to another look at a video and today I'm going to be looking at the latest incarnation of the Raspberry Pi. Now, you know, chances are the fact that you're watching my video means you're probably into retro games and emulation and chances are you're fully aware of the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi was basically, it was a educational sort of thing that was developed to enable uh, computers to be bought at a very, very low cost um, for, you know, for education, etc. Now, like any computer type thing, um, once they fall into the hands of retro gamers, they're turned into video gaming uh, platforms. And that's not a bad thing. So, yeah, this is the Raspberry Pi 400. Now, you can see there, I'm just going to, I'm going to move it a wee bit. Hang on, there we go. It is just a keyboard. Now, inside that, it's got Raspberry Pi 400. I think the model of uh, 400 is slightly faster than the, the, the sort of Raspberry Pi 400, sorry, Raspberry Pi 4. It's, so it's a Raspberry Pi 4 that's inside this, but I think it's a slightly faster model than if you just bought a normal Raspberry Pi 4. I might be talking nonsense, but uh, suffice to say, what's inside this is an excellent little piece of kit. I'm going to put it down again, like so. So, whoops, a daisy. Oh, stupid iPad. There we go. Right, you stay there. Stay. Yeah, so there it's there. Now, <laughs> it is ridiculously thin. I mean, it's just, it's so, so thin. It's very, very light. Not too light. I mean, it's got a great feel. The keyboard, if I was a programmer, I would really, really like that. It feels very much like a sort of, I don't know, these little Bluetooth keyboards that you can buy. Nice. So on the keyboard itself, you've got, I mean, you've got up to F10, but then if you press the function key, you can then get F11, F12. Um, yeah, it's it's a keyboard. There's not really much else to say about it. Underneath, there's not a great deal. There's sides. There's nothing on the sides to speak of at all. This is where all the interesting stuff happens. On the back, now, I don't actually know what that's for. That port here, you get that in the Raspberry Pi, I don't really know what that is because I'm not technical in the slightest. You've got a micro SD card, you've got uh, you've got two HDMI outputs, so you can, in theory, output to two uh, screens, apparently to the resolution of 4K. Now, I've not tried that, I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, yeah, you've got the two, two outputs there. It's a USB-C charger. Then you've got two USB 3s and is that a USB 1 I think it is, then you've got your Ethernet. It's also got Wi-Fi built in as well. Underneath you can see there, um, yep, Raspberry Pi 400 and it's got some little cooling vents along the bottom. So, you know, if you want a standalone, if you want a computer that you can use for just doing stuff, um, and my dog's come in, don't you dare walk in front of the camera actually, um, yeah, I mean it's a... It's a lovely little bit of kit, all you need, yeah, when you buy it, in fact, what I've completely forgot to mention, when you buy the, the pack, I bought an all-in-one pack, you also get this lovely little mouse. I think it's, I mean, it's, a, it's an official Raspberry Pi mouse. The only thing I don't like about it is the cord is very short, it's not a long cord. Standard USB mouse, but I mean it works very well. It's an optical mouse. It's not one of the roller balls. I don't think you can make roller balls anymore. You excuse me. You also get. Let's plug this just now. You also get. It's a. On that end. Oops, a daisy. I'm getting muddled up here. On that end, you've got the standard HDMI, and is that? I don't know what is that. Is that a micro USB or something they call it? I'm not exactly sure what they call it. So anyway, yeah, that's it. It's uh, all you need to do is you do get. I mean, I bought it with uh, an SD card, a micro SD card included, but you can uh, you can obviously put bigger ones in. I've got a thirty two gig uh, in this. But anyway, the point of this video wasn't so much to show you the Raspberry Pi four hundred. It's basically to show you if you want to have the next best thing to a real Amiga. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and power this thing up, and then I'll switch it back on. Back in a tick. Right, so what I've got plugged in here, I've got uh, on the left, that black cable there, that is the Xbox uh, wireless controller, so I can use my uh, 360 controller. 
I've got the mouse plugged in and I've got the HDMI cable plugged in and all I need to do now is plug in the power. So let's power it on. What I'm going to do is point this at the TV. Right, okay, let's plug the bad boy in. No apologies about the uh, the rather poor poor setup. I've got the uh, iPad balanced on a coffee table with a coaster underneath it to try and get the right angle. Now this is version 1.4 which is easily available online. I'm not going to put a link to it but uh, dead easy to find. So yeah, this is it. I mean, I'm, I'm running this on a 55 inch TV and this looks absolutely beautiful. It really does. So basically you're running an Amiga. This is an Amiga. Um, you've got all manner of stuff down here. You know, I mean, you, you can go into uh, demos Double click on that. Now, let's have a look. Amiga 4, what's that? 4K, there's demos, intros, 4K, music discs. Let's try that. Music discs, let's go for chip nostalgia. Is it that? Ah, right, so you can basically pick what you want. The Last Ninja. Let's try the Commando High Score. to both mouse buttons. Okay, so yeah, I mean you've got all you've got all these music discs. This all basically comes built in. Disc magazines. Um I don't really want to look at them. Demos, let's have a wee look. I mean the Amiga was massive on demos. Now one of my favourite ones, oh there's an oxygen one, let's have a look at that. Is it going to start? Hopefully you can see just how good this looks. The whole point of this video is, uh, I mean, <laughs> if you've tried to buy a Commodore Amiga, uh, a Special 1200 in the last couple of years, you'll realise the price has really, pardon me, the price is really going through the roof. They're not cheap at all. Now, you can absolutely, you can use your Amiga emulator on your PC. 
you can also, you know, uh, yeah, you can use it on your PC, and it runs pretty well, but, you know, to be able to just play your Commodore Amiga on your TV, and sit on the couch and play games, this thing is hard to beat. And what I like about the, the uh, Pi 400 is the fact that it's, it's not a built, it's not a built-in keyboard, it is a keyboard. You've got all the, you know, the Amiga was a computer, so having a keyboard is nice. I mean, you can run this on a, a Raspberry Pi 4, or I think there are versions for the Pi 3. The problem you've got is you don't have the keyboard. And so for a, you know, for a computer emulator, it's better to have a keyboard. Now to come out of this, it's running basically, it's a version of when you, you, you press F12 button, like so. And then what I can do is, I mean that basically gives you the options, you've got your pass, that's already set up, quick start, you want to put a disc in. CPU, now you can see here it's set up as a 68020, um, it's set to fastest, uh, yeah I mean you can change the clock speed, the chipset, it's AGA, I've not touched any of this at all, ROM, I'm using the 3.1A1200, the RAM, 8 meg, uh, it's got 128 meg of RTG board, whatever that means, hard disks, they're all uh, they're all set up, so you don't have to bother at all, it's set up really nicely, I didn't touch this, it just plays perfectly, sound, uh, yep, stereo, perfect, the only thing I had to do, when I plugged in my joystick, you, uh, I had to change, in fact I'll need to do that just now actually, I need to change that to, yeah, keyboard. Ah, hang on, it's because I've not plugged this in right, what I'm going to have to do, I didn't switch my, uh, I didn't switch my, I didn't switch the, uh, what do you call it, I didn't switch my, my uh, gamepad on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a restart, I'll just reboot. Now hopefully that's done, I might have to actually restart it properly, let's have a look. Right, I think I'm going to have to do a reset, so if I click on reset, that'll basically, it's just like rebooting your Commodore Amiga. You see there, Pi 4, complete 400. Now I've got to give a big shout out to uh, my mate Alan, it was Alan that uh, I knew these images existed, but I'd never really found one that worked that well. Now, Alan gave me a uh, 1.3. Apparently, 1.2 has got Amiga viruses on it, so you want to steer clear of that one. Uh, 1.3, you can't get anymore because they upgraded to 1.4, but the reason I got 1.3 of Alan was because 1.4, you've got to put your own kickstarts in. Now, I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that, but however, I discovered once I'd burned the, uh, the image, 1.4 image to an SD card, you put it in a PC, there's a kickstart folder, so all you need to do is pop in your two kickstarts and away you go. So right, let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to F12 and then we'll see if it's picked it up. Like it hasn't, so you know what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to shut it down and then what I'll do is I'll just plug it back in again, I'll switch it off. Plug it back in. And it should reboot. Now one thing I'm not sure about, I've got my joystick plugged into just the USB 1 port. I don't know if that makes any difference to be honest with you. I don't know whether it's going to be in a USB 3 port. We'll give it a go. Because this is like configured at a high-end mega sorry, a high-end Amiga. It boots up really quick and everything is just so slick. Now I think if you're on the internet you could probably use this on the internet. Right, let me have a look. So F12 and then we'll go down to input. There we go. It's now showing my Xbox 360 wireless receiver. So that's all I had to do. You've got custom controls. I didn't have to do anything. You can see there it's now showing that. Uh, well, all I want to do here is go to configuration and uh, I just want to do save and that should now hopefully resume, that should now hopefully save it. Now there's different ways, I mean you can go into the system, I'm, I know nothing about Amiga really, I mean I had an Amiga for many years but I'm, um, I'm rubbish 
<laughs> when it comes to stuff. There's Deluxe Paint 4. Detaint. Right, don't know what's going on there. Whatever that is, it doesn't like it. Uh, right, don't know, it doesn't like that at all. So I'm just going to do a reset. I am being bad. Now it's not going to be a long video. I actually stopped walking about. I've got a dog who likes to get out of the way. Come on, out of the way, Archie. Uh, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you games. I mean, you've got all this other stuff down here. Eagle Player, Amiga Amp, Snoop Doss, whatever that is. You've got a synthesizer thing. I mean, this is all Amiga software. Who's a excellent? I don't know why I go into these because then I struggle to get back out. Uh, how do we? <laughs> how do we come out of this? Play. I don't know what it's doing. Stop. How do we exit? Let's try pressing escape. No, you know what, we'll just do F12 and we'll just, we'll just do a, a reset again. Right, I'm going to jump in. I mean, you've got all your demos. I'm going to jump in and let you see how the games work. Or how they perform, I should say. Now, there's two different ways to run games. You can go into games. And then uh, you've got Doom, oh interesting, Duke Nukem, Doom, right, should we give this a go? Doom, yeah, let's give this a wee go. Uh, yeah, that'll do, okay. There you go, there's Doom on the Amiga. That is not too shabby at all. Now you would need quite a quite a top end Amiga I think to, to use this. Right, let's come back out. Let's quit the game. Yep. So you've got tons and tons and tons of different options. So yeah, what else have you got? Duke Nukem 3D. Um, this is actually the first time I've tried uh, 1.4, so it's set up slightly differently. What's this, Reaver? Are these videos? Shut up and dance. Let's just come out of that. But yeah, yeah, you've got all you've got video clips and that as well. Uh, is there anything actually worth watching? Ah, right. I did watch this other day. Now, this is really nice. I'm going to let you listen to this. This is Ben Dalglish. Remembered. This is beautiful.
we didn't mind they including that. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful tribute to a guy that's uh, sorely missed, Ben Douglas. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's before my battery runs out. I'm going to. There's, so there's tons of stuff. Best way to play games is this thing here called iGame. And you'll see there. There you go. It just lists all the games now. There you go. There's two thousand seven hundred and thirteen games now. You can just scroll down. They're all in alphabetical order. For some reason, some of these games have got these stupid things. So you know, you want to load a game, Top Gear, or whatever. Um, now this is an awesome, awesome collection. However, it would get a ten out of ten if it wasn't for one thing, and that is one of my favourite Amiga games is missing and it's probably the uh, it's probably the best shoot 'em up in the system and it's Hybris now it's missing <laughs> but uh, if you go into games now I did uh, let me see if I can find it oh, and I see that's now see this is set up slightly differently what's that USB Um, yeah, the other version is the 1.3, the games had different, I think these are actual just standalone games. Yeah, the other version is 1.3 had, uh, it did have the hybris, but you had to actually go and look for it. Uh, they look like they're actual specific games. So yeah, it looks like this, uh, it looks like it looks like uh, there's no way to play Hybris, which is an absolute travesty. WB Games, let me have a look at that. Hang in there. Mm. No, don't see it. There. Anyway, there's more to... Uh, oh, interestingly, there's also emulators. <laughs> Spectrum, I'm getting I'm kind of completely going off topic. In fact, here we go, I'm an Atari. This is an Atari emulator. Looking for volume, I don't know. We try it. Okay, it doesn't like that. Cancel. Oh. Right. It looks like we're running an Atari emulator. Which is interesting, considering we're using one in Amiga. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of goes to show how powerful this uh, Raspberry Pi is, the fact that it's emulating an Amiga, emulating an Atari. Right, I don't know how we come out of this. Uh, how do we come out of this? Right, you know, whoops, oh there we go. Just click the mouse. Right, wait a minute. The mouse pointer has gone. Oh, there we're back again. Right, let's close that down. Uh, Frodo now, I'm sure that's, yeah, that's a C64 emulator. Okay. So I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here. I should be showing you Commodore Amiga games. I don't know how to, don't know how to load a game in this. Right, you know what, I'm going, to, I'm going to do is I'm going to reset it. I'm going to do a restart. Restart just does a quick restart, whereas reset actually. Start. Oh, you mean? Oh, no, it, doesn't, it does exactly the same thing, both can you reboot the system. Right, I'm not going to mess up with anything else, I'm going to dive straight in to the eye game again. So, down here. And you can just basically scroll down. So let's try, uh, let's try Alien Breed. I mean, it's just got them all, apart from Hybris. Alien Breed uh, 2, go for that, yep. Yeah. These are all WHD files, or hard, uh, hard drive files. It tells you there, press print screen to quit.
Now it does load super fast. Obviously, you wouldn't normally want to play an Amiga on a, a TV this size because it does look a bit kind of jaggy. But you can obviously mess about with the options to your heart's content. I always thought that this game was quite annoying because it, it's very, I mean, it's a hard game. But to, uh, then, uh, you know, to, to, to even just to try and get into the base itself is difficult, you just keep getting hit constantly. So there you go, and to quit, so press print screen. Come on, why is it not doing it? Is it all I need print screen? Right, annoyingly this doesn't want to let us quit, so I'm going to have to do F12 again and I'll just do a quick reset. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now I've noticed one slight thing. It doesn't... I don't know if you noticed that when I was playing that. It's not as silky smooth as it should be now. There's obviously... There's obviously, I wonder... I know this, I'm playing this on a, a, it's a six month old 55 inch TV, I've noticed that, I don't know whether it's the refresh rate or whatever, but this works much better on an older TV, it might just be something to do with that, I have noticed that in the past with the Raspberry Pi, Pi's, I think it's Raspberry Pi 4's actually, it, the refresh rate must be slightly different and the bigger TVs don't quite like it, but I mean it's still, I think it still looks phenomenal. Um, now what you can do is rather than scroll down, you can just uh, let's see, type in Lotus. There you go, Lotus Turbo Challenge. We'll go for the original one, I think. But you can hopefully tell there, the, the sound is just perfect. Hey, right, how do we fight to continue? Let's go. I don't know, we're getting a bit of glitching going on down the bottom there. Right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come out of this. It doesn't want me to let me come out, right? I'm going to, sorry, I'm just going to... I'm going to unpause it again. There we go, whoops. Yeah, I want one pause. I was playing uh, Lotus 2 and that plays flawlessly. But you know, for an experience to be able to enjoy the Commodore Amiga on a large TV, this takes some beating, it really does. How can we not? Right, we just need to do it the old fashioned way again. Uh, can you eject possibly a hard disk? No, we don't want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. Floppy disk? No. 
So yeah, the floppy disk speed is set to 800, so again you can change that. Let's just do a quick uh, restart. And then start. Uh, what have I done there? I, let's just unplug it and plug it back in again. But it's it's a really it's probably the most affordable way to be able to play an Amiga as it was intended, i.e. plugged into a TV. You know, sitting in the couch with a joystick in your hand, um, realize it's, oh, it's a lovely, lovely way to experience the Amiga. Obviously, you get yourself a Pi 400, you can do so much more with it. You can get yourself a nice uh, arcade uh, image when you've got all these cracking games to enjoy. So let's try, let's try Speedball 2. Not a fan of this game, but anyway. Is like just instant. Uh, right, how do we? How do we exit? Escape. Oops. No bollocks! I don't want to do that. I want to escape. No escape. Yeah, it's definitely not as uh, it's definitely not playing as well as it should. But trust me, that is down to my TV. takes us out. I don't know if this, hopefully this iPad's still recording, like I said it was on pretty low main. No, it's stopped. No, it's not stopped, it just says battery low. That's okay, we're still in business. Right, 10% left in the battery, so we better be quick. Uh, right, what I want to do is let you see a game that uses a mouse, so let's try Let's try Dungeon Master. Dungeon, there we go. Dungeon Master 2, Dungeon Master 1. Computer shop I used to go to all the time, they played us constantly in Atari ST. Um, I wouldn't say I never saw the appeal of it, I never got into the game the way other people got into it. Hall of Champions, and this is where you've got to basically pick who you want to be. Yeah, we'll pick that dude. Do you click on him? Let's resurrect him. There we go. And we'll go for him as well. And there's one 
This probably looks more like me apart from the lack of hair. <coughs> and there's John Bon Jovi. Right, we've now got our crew, so where do we go now? But yeah, you can see there, it works really, really well. The problem for me with these games is I just go round and round and round in circles. You really need to map it if you're going to play this properly. I've just gone back into the game, haven't I? Or is that me going out, I think? <laughs> ah, can you go with that way, maybe? Let's, well, that's a dead end. Anyway, that's Dungeon Master. Let's see, F10, I'm going to take him out and delete. Escape game frozen. That's annoying. Depends depends how the game's been set up. Some of them uh, some of the would you call it the uh, most of the keys it'll be F10 to exit, but in this instance it's not it's print screen but for some reason it doesn't seem to like that key. So what we need to do is just go F12 and then drop back out again, we'll do a quick reset. And I'll try a couple of more games. I'll try uh, what we stunt can razor. You can see there just how quickly it actually loads stuff, which is really nice. I just want to curiosity see if there's it doesn't really do frames per second, does it? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know enough about this. But as I says, I'll guarantee this will play absolutely perfect on a different TV. I did notice that the last time um, when I played a Pi 4 on this particular TV. It's, it just doesn't play as smooth as it should. But I think I did Google it and I think that's just it's to do with, I don't know, it's to do with refresh rates of the screen or whatever it is I'm not 100% sure so anyway let's resume and then we'll, we'll, do, we'll try there's a pawn up there did I see that there's a pawn that was always a, a game that I thought looked amazing let's try Banshee that's a lovely lovely uh, lovely shooter whoops Banshee, where is it? Banshee, never gone too far. Backlash, there's Banshee there, yeah, let's go for that. This was a shoot em up that I never actually got to play uh, back in the day because I'd sold my Amiga, I'd moved on to the PC by that point. Is it working or not? It looks like we've maybe found a game that doesn't want to load. That's a bit strange. Right, F10 is it to come out? It doesn't want to quit. That's annoying. Trust me, every uh, every game that I played beforehand, <laughs> they were all they were all nice and easy to come out. 
what you need to do is when you load a game, check to see it does tell you what key you need to press, but for some reason, the print screen button on this doesn't seem to replicate the uh, print screen button on the Amiga. Uh, right, so we can't try that. Let's go for Stunt Car Racer. I did play that one before. Stunt. There we go. Stunt Car Racer. Absolute Stonewall classic. Joystick going off, just two ticks. Oh, 12. Uh, input, no, it's still there. Resume, why is it not? Ah, right, for some reason it's. No, right, okay, it's going to the, the game pad rather than the. Uh, rather than the analog stick name. Uh, yeah, let's go for start the racing season. Wow. And we're off. Let's get a bit of boost to try and get past this wee guy. It in the very, very first corner. Out that one. Good. Right, we'll try one more game and then we'll wrap this one up. Uh, let me think, what can we? Ah, right, genres. Let's go for shoot em up. Total zero games. Right, these have obviously not been adult. Ooh. Last played stunt car racer. Most played Zool. I'll let you see Lotus Turbo. Oh no, I don't want that print. Ah, oh, balls. I wish I could figure that out. How to get out of that? That's annoying. I didn't mean to do that, right? We need to come back out. I need a quick reset. I might need to do Lotus Turbo Challenge too. back down to that. But yeah, hopefully this video has pr uh, proven somewhat beneficial. Apologies about my usual uh, technical uh, interruptions. Um, it's, I mean, you know, as a means of owning a really, really high powered uh, Amiga and being able to play, play it on your TV, it's, it's just fantastic. Uh, Lotus of Speed Challenge, Turbo Challenge 2, there we go, that's what I want. Right, press help to quit. Uh, yeah, it's an absolute awesome way. It's an awesome way to experience it. Plus, you know, you can obviously get other other uh, SD cards and put other images on it. So you're not just stuck with Amiga.
being able to play this on a 55 inch TV is just awesome. <laughs> Again, the updating will be smoother on another TV, trust me in that. But it still looks, I think it still looks fantastic. Anyway, listen, I'm going to come out of this now. That is, is it a skate? Oh, I'll just take you back to that. Oh, my foot's going to sleep. Why me? Right, anyway, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I says, that is a Pi 400, uh, and you can easily download, just do a quick Google for Pi Image, P I M. I Pi Image P I M I G E, and then you can either get I think, in fact, I think it's version 1.4 is the one that you can get. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. If there's any questions, please pop them in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>